go for it. Okay, we'll start the front here with the flywheel and shear bolts. Uh, one shear bolt, one main shear bolt on the flywheel. And that one's gonna shear if the plunger plunges too hard. Like if you get a slug in the plunger, that's the one that'll it'll take out. And there is spare shear bolts in the toolbox for that one. The other shear bolt on the baler is the Packer shear bolt. It's a heavier one, half inch bolt. It's located right up here. If that one will shear if there's a problem with the nodder, but most times uh, you'll have a slug in the pre-compression chamber and, uh, and if that happens, the fork drops, tries to move the material up and it's, it's jammed up, it'll take that shear bolt. There it's a matter of cranking the flywheel back till the bolt lines up, put a new one in. Generally, it will go on the, the next try. The other th items that are in the toolbox, we've got some spare parts. There's one box in here with spare nodder parts, a bill hook, and a bunch of other small parts, a knife, a roller, and electrical parts. There's a couple magnets, sensors, and fuses for electrical items. There's one sheer uh, slip clutch, and it should be warm to the touch after you're bailing for a while. If okay. it's super hot, it's too loose. If it's cold, it's too tight. Okay. Nodder brake. Anytime you want to stop the baler quick, engage the brake, should stop it. Or if you're climbing inside the baler, you don't want the plunger to move. On the pickup, of course, we have the wind guard, and it's suspended by chains. So to get that wind guard down close to the crop, just lengthen the chains. Other adjustments on the pickup are our, our gauge wheels for the pickup. We want to adjust them that they're maybe an inch or two below the tines. So that if you hit a high spot in the field that it lifts the pickup up over that high spot and keeps the tines from getting into the dirt. Uh, we normally don't run the pickup on the wheels. We carry the pickup with the baler. Okay. And that adjustment is right here. So right now it's back the whole way, locking the pickup up. We'll raise the pickup, move this forward, and allow it to lower and find a, the right spot. The last adjustment on the pickup would be the flotation. How heavy is the pickup? And that adjustment's right here. By tightening this bolt, it bends this torsion bar and transfers weight from the pickup onto the baler. We normally want to see somewhere around 50 to 80 pounds to lift that pickup. Okay. If it's too light, it'll bounce as you're going through the field. Too heavy, you hit a rock and it'll crush a band or something. Okay. So. Moving back from the pickup, we have our, our uh, packer fingers, or packer fork crank. No, no, almost no maintenance there. They just pretty much run. There's no shear bolts. Uh, beyond that is the stuffer fork. It normally is in its part position until the pressure in the prepacker chamber gets high enough, forces down the trip door, and activates the clutch here. The fork makes one cycle and resets again, and that's one flake. Okay. Now, if you're bailing fast enough, it'll just keep constantly running. By the time it makes its cycle, the chamber's full and it just runs right away again. A few important grease certs uh, down in here. Right now it happens to line up. This is a daily cert, and there's another one just like it up at the nodder on its clutch. So that's, that's a 10R cert there. There's only two. Okay. Where's the other one? Uh, oh, we'll it's we'll get a to that. clutch assembly, but it's up on the end okay. of the nodder. For ejecting the bale, we have a hydraulic valve here, and on the monitor we go into a, a ejection screen, and it, the baler will automatically decrease the press pressure, and and only after the pressure is totally released will it supply oil back to this valve, and that will allow you to run the ejection forks. And depending on the lever setting down here, the ejection forks will also pick up the roller chute. Okay. Bale length adjusted here. Just loosen the, the nut and crank the crank up and down, run that bolt up and down, we'll adjust the bale length. We've got a, a lockout, a nutter lockout, and where, where you would use that is if you get out of the tractor, the baler's running, and you come up here and you say, oh, i got to do something with a nutter, but all it would take is a little kick with your foot to trip the nutter and cycle it. So we got a lockout where we can slide this back and say, okay, now it can't trip, now I'm safe, fairly safe to reach into the nutter even though the baler's running which is not a good practice, but we do have a, a bit of a safety. There's also a safety for the stuffer. 
So there again, if the baler is running and you happen to be in this area, you really don't want this to cycle because it does make a pretty big arc here. We can push the red, yellow lever in and it, and it can't trip. Normally it's in the out position. There is a sensor on there. If you run the power takeoff with this lever locked, the monitor will alarm and, and say, hey, you're in the locked position. We've got a sensor on the bale chute. What it's telling us right now, if we started the baler, it would alarm and say shoots up so that you don't accidentally go out and bale with the chains hooked up. Uh, so we do have one of them. We do have a, a paddle at the back of the chute. And as the bale rolls across there and that paddle moves up, it'll, it'll beep and tell you that a bale dropped. Reason for that is so if a bale just dropped that you know not to back up. On twine, be the same, whether it's this side or the other side, the, uh, the top twines only do the top of the bale. The bottom twines do the ends plus the bottom. So you'll be using two balls to the t on the top to three on the bottom. It's just the way it holds out. Okay. Oil system here is automatic. Now we can adjust it on the monitor how often it, or, or how many bales, whether it's every 50 bales or every 70 or every 30 bales that the uh, oiler cycles, but it only lubes the nodder. So this lube here goes right up to the nodder. It is automatic. 85-140 gear oil is what gets used in there. We've got a, uh, a brake here. It's similar to the nodder brake. It's what holds the stuffer fork in position. So they'll stay suspended up here until the clutch trips. This brake will also get warm should never get that hot that it's a potential fire hazard, but it should be warm to the touch where it's uncomfortable to touch. Up in the front here, we have our packer and pickup slip clutch. So it's a main slip clutch. It protects the packer. If you got a log or a stone in there, it should slip. And in some cases, if you get the pickup jammed, it will slip. But on the monitor, it will come up as packer slip. If it's the pickup only, then it's this clutch. So the large clutch does packer and pickup. This clutch does pickup only. And it can, it can tell which is slipping by the various sensors on the baler. The uh, baler's main control module is here. Uh, there's really no maintenance uh, as just where it's located. The uh, hydraulic system for the baler is this small valve here. Self-contained hydraulic system, the oil reservoir, and the level gauge. Uh, we have two hydraulic pumps piggybacked. One does the hydraulic system, which is basically the press. The other pump does the fan, the nodder cleaning fan. Runs all the time, the PTO runs. You can't turn it on or off or anything. Okay, we'll go up top of 